What happens with our heat equation if we do not set the temperature to zero on both ends of the rod, but to some other temperature? In practice we can easily do this of course. Can we still use separation of variables to solve our equation? Well, yes we can, but we need to be a bit more careful now. So what do we have? Same PDE, some initial condition, we will specify that one later on. But now we set T0 at uh, uh, zero and T1 at, uh, at L. So can we just do what we always did? So use uh, un equals x of x times t of t. Now what happens at x equals 0, u of 0 comma t, again x0 t, t equals t1. So can we then set x of 0 equals t1? Well, if we would do that, then we run into trouble. Because in the end, we are going to take linear combinations of the x's. Uh, so in the end, we would get uh, not uh, t1 anymore at x equals 0, but uh, the, 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 the linear combinations times t1, so some entirely different value. So that is not going to work. We have to come up with something different. So what can we do? Uh, we use an ansatz. We say our u of x and t is some equilibrium solution, the sum of an equilibrium solution plus the, some transients. And again, I will pause a moment because can you come up with the equilibrium solution, the solution which you uh, will achieve after a long time, just on physical grounds? What does your physical intuition tell you? What should be the equilibrium solution? Where should we go? after a long time. Well, let's see. Uh, let's do the computation. Uh, so uh, we plug in the answers here in the PDE. Well, on the left hand side, we only get the time derivative of the transients because the equilibrium solution does not depend on time. And here we get both terms. Then we plug it into the uh, boundary conditions at x equals 0, we get the equilibrium at 0 and the transient 0, comma t equals t0. At L, similarly, but now t1. And for t equals 0, we get u equilibrium of x. And the transient x, comma 0 equals fx has to be equal to our initial condition. But now we are going to split up the problem in two parts. We, first we say, well, for our equilibrium solution, I want the second derivative to be 0. And that means that for my transients, the PDE remains. And then we satisfy this equation over here. Then for my equilibrium solution, I want at 0 to have t0 and at L to have t1. t0 and t1, which means that for my transients, the uh, homogeneous uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions remain. And with these ansets on the equilibrium solution, I also know that for my a initial condition, we will get that for the transients at time zero, we will have fx minus u equilibrium, like this. So now we have two problems. First, an equilibrium problem, which we'll do first. That will give us u equilibrium as a function of x. And a transient problem. However, our transient problem now has the homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions, which is similar to our previous example. So now we can solve our transient problem by methods we have already seen before. Let us take a look at the equilibrium problem first and see whether your intuition was correct. So the second derivative equals zero, integrate once, so we get c1, integrate again, we get c1x plus c2, uh, plug in the uh, boundary conditions at uh, x equals zero, your equilibrium equals t0 equals c2, and at L, your equilibrium equals C1L plus T0 has to be equal to T1. So uh, C1 equals T1 minus C0 over L. And here we have our equilibrium solution, which is linear. At x equals 0, you are at T0. And at x equals L, you are at T1. And the line is connecting both of them. Uh, so this is the solution we will uh, reach if time goes to infinity. Uh, was this? Uh, in agreement with what you what's expecting on the physical grounds. Now we can take a look at the transients. Uh, uh, we know the uh, solution uh, because we are uh, 
I've uh, solved this problem before using separation of variables. We have the signs times the exponential, uh, and we only have to determine the cn. At time, uh, uh, at uh, x equals zero, and time t, we have an f of x minus u equilibrium is some g of x. Uh, now we call it g of x, and our c n are given by the Fourier series of the g of x. Now, in order to compute this, we need to specify some values. So for now, we will take t0, 20, t1, 50, l30, and alpha 0.1. And we have to specify some initial conditions. So let's take 60 minus 2x. Uh, with these parameters, our u equilibrium will be 20 plus x. And our g of x equals f of x minus u equilibrium equals 40 minus 3x. And with this g of x, we can compute our cn. So we compute our cn. We have L equals 30, so 2 over 30. Here we have a 40 minus 3x, which was our g of x. Here, sine n pi x over L. Uh, we have to use integration by parts. The sine becomes a cosine times 30 over n pi. 30 over n pi with the minus sign times 2 over 30 gives us the minus 2 over n pi uh, between the boundary conditions. And uh, here we have the uh, 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 minus uh, 60 over n pi times the cosine. Uh, this integral over here will give us sines, which are zero. And uh, plugging in the boundaries here, we have some ugly numbers. Okay, for x equals 30, we get minus 50, uh, uh, which is the upper boundary. For x equals zero, we get 40, which is the lower boundary, so hence a minus 40. And there we have our CNs. So now we can plot our solutions. Uh, the red one is the initial uh, curve, the initial, initial condition. Then sometime later we get the blue one. Uh, sharp, uh, sharp, uh, sharp edges getting a bit uh, less. Then the, uh, we get the yellow one. And if time goes on and goes on, we eventually get closer and closer to the uh, green one, which was the equilibrium solution. So now you have learned how you can solve the heat equation with Dirichlet boundary conditions if they are not uh, uh, homogeneous. Just write your total solution of, as a sum of an equilibrium solution and transients, where your equilibrium solution can be computed using, because it's an ODE basically, and the transients can be uh, uh, calculated, because for the transients you again have your homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions.